Oh. 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 Zombie. 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 Zombie nation. Oh, wait a second. Oh, enough commercial breaks. That's right. Hello, folks. Welcome back. And I'm sorry about yesterday. Um, I have to figure out which channel is the access channel. Or I think I have to wait, I think, two more weeks before I make a Tuesday night impact. But it's not Tuesday, though, folks. It's Wednesday night. And you know what that means? That means it's time for some AEW with random pauses. Mm. Indeed. So let's talk about some AEW. And it's always nice to talk about something different, I guess. Um, overall, it was good. It felt like a house show. Minus the pyro, it didn't seem to have that TV production. I just might be used to this WWE product or even Impact Wrestling because I don't know. It's just another wrestling show for some reason. I don't know. I'm, I'm not that big on it, which is. I guess interesting to think it's the thing with AEW, the big stars are really big, but then there's such a drop off in the mid car. It's not even funny, but enough about that. I'll let you guys judge for yourself. Yeah. You can always feel free to agree or disagree with me again. Cause I am the one, the only hobo Tom. And let's start off. I'm uh, talking about the crowd. Uh, there were some empty seats there. They sold out everything. It is a school day. I don't know if people can make it or not, but when they showed shots to the crowd, like there were like open seats available. And there were people with signs. <laughs> One guy had a sense of Vince fears ratings. I don't know. Vince might be getting some ratings soon. But enough about that. I'll, 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 I'll talk about that crowd later. Tony Schiavone's back! Yes! 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 Always oh, good to see Tony Schiavone. I remember hearing from his days in NWA and WCW, so that was good. Uh, starts off kind of almost a cold opening. Uh, the announcers are there. Then all of a sudden, they kind of start off. I think it was like good three or four minutes of a promo, but it was weird. It was all staged and pre-taped. It's not bad. And then the show kind of started up. It was a weird delay. They have to work out some of these commercial breaks. They know it was supposedly limited commercial interruption. I think there were only two things that there was a segment. And they have to get the wrestlers more on cue when they're on break because if not they're just kind of like randomly leaning against the ropes saying pay me so, oh you hello it's, it's, it's nice to see you yes nice to see you all and even the heels to that it's like it, it kind of takes away the magic of it because I know when I went to Smackdown Live in Orlando, Nia Jax did kind of the same thing. She just like hung out at the top of the stage. I think yelled at some stage hands to get, a, get her a chair and just kind of chilled out and kind of said, Yep, hi, people. Yes, thank th th thank you for coming today. Yes, I, I'm, I am, well, I'm a hobo Tom. She's like, Yes, I, I am Nia Jax. I forgot her name for a moment. It's been a while. I don't know if she's still recovering from a knee injury or, or, or what's going on with her. But it's not the time or place. So let's talk about Cody Rhodes taking on Sammy Guevara. And wow. Brandy's the real eye piece of this. She was wearing some white backless 
I don't even know if it was a dress. It almost looked like a fancy model of swimsuit. So I'll tell you what, Cody Rhodes, there you, you you married above your weight class, sir. Uh, and Sammy Guevara comes out with a panda head. It was an old, it, I thought this matchup was actually really good. Um, my fear was that they were going to go to the time limit draw, or that Cody was going to do something nefarious with it because he wears that weight belt, and I guess that's his thing. I can accept that. It's, it kind of felt like a, a semi college wrestling match to begin with. Okay, like, whenever you have technical wrestling, I like that stuff. Uh, Sammy doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. I tell you what, Sammy has to learn not to slap Cody Rhodes. That's not going to get you any brownie points. And Cody Rhodes, he's, he's such a good technical wrestler. It's hard to say anything bad about a Cody Rhodes match, with the ex one exception of they just tend to go on forever. And it's kind of harkens back to that NWA style. I'm sure he's talked to when when, when his when his when his father was alive, the late great Dusty Rhodes. And then I make fun of Dusty Rhodes because I care. And I'm sure everyone else. That, I'm sure he met freaking everyone. I'm sure he's met the Flares, the Andersons. He had to talk to some of these people in, in many many travels. But he has that. Amazing delayed vertical suplex. That's really good. Uh, with this match, Sammy Guevara, it was a, again, tail two styles. Cody Rhodes wanted to slow things down, have a traditional NWA match. Sammy Guevara wanted to do the high flying lucha stuff, which, which is good. Again, styles make fights, though. And to this point, Cody understands that. Because when it's a, a slog versus a slog, you just have a slog of a match. This at least felt like something. And the fact that they actually do have like win loss records next to their names is another cool thing. It, it makes it feel like the wrestling actually counts for something besides besides hey you, you punched me in the face, or as WWE would go hey guess who I'm sleeping with, <laughs> or, or 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 I just kick you in the groin. Um, what else about this match? Oh, Sammy heel, Sammy Guevara is a heel. He pulled Brady in front of Brand he pulled Brandy Rose in front of him when Cody was going to do some suicide splash, so that forces Cody to land on his wife, Brandy. And Brandy's oh, there's my cat. There she is. Brandy's kind of feelish herself, because eventually she recovers pretty quick. I think the thing I don't like about East about I almost call it ECW. AEW. It seems to highlight the fact that it's pro wrestling. And what I mean by that is that they, they would do a devastating move and, and this uh, showcases itself later. But And the person just like jumps out of it. It's like, if that ever happened to me, I'd be dead. Minor quibble, I guess. But uh, Brandy comes to... She just clocks Sammy Guevara in the head with a shoe. Cody Rhodes with a little jumping spin off the rope. Years ago, that would have been the finish to the match. But it wasn't. Uh, Cody hit a reverse superplex. And then they just had a spot fest. Sammy Guevara hit a top rope Spanish fly. Uh, Sammy tried to go up again. He's got small packaged. And Cody won. It wasn't. It was a good match. I think. The fact that I saw Pyro and Brandy's bare naked back. The wrestling was really good. This was a good, it had the energy. The crowd was really up for this. They were every time it was too sweet. So the crowd, the crowd gave me energy by watching it. So therefore this is a surf and turf match. And then after the match, Jericho, Jumps in the ring because Sammy Guevara tries to shake Cody's hand in a sportsmanship. Jericho comes in and starts to destroying Cody. And the crowd is saying, Thank you, Jericho. Thank you, Jericho. Again, that was that was good stuff. Um, then the next match was Brandon Cut Cutler versus MJF. MJF and his amazing heel. 
I can take nothing away from MJF's promo ability. Uh, how he conducts him, how he wrestles in the ring. Uh, it's heelish. It has the typical heel pattern. He needs an opponent who's going to lift him and elevate his skills, not just taking on jobbers. If MJF just takes on random jobbers, or even jobbers with a storyline, like uh, Brandon Cutler's storyline, was he went to high school with the Young Bucks, and eventually he had a dude, he had a family, the Young Bucks became wrestlers, he got older, I guess got more developed as a family man, so yeah, I'm going to go back into wrestling. He gave somewhat of a story. Uh, again, Brandon Cutler, he did that really slow, awkward-looking Lucha Destroyer. You have to be really crisp with that move. Uh, he also did the suicide. He did what he did do was was pretty cool. He did the suicide dive into Luthes press to fast hands, so that was pretty cool. Uh, MJF has a Fujiwara armbar, and he calls it something else. It's a Fujiwara armbar. And again, it's your classic idea of your heels finishing move being a submission move, and he did work over the arm a little bit, so, so he set up to some degree. This was a quick match. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. There was some light profanity used by both Tony Schiavone and JR, which is kind of funny to hear. JR sounds like he's, he's forced saying that. JR is confused, though, because he would say, Oh, now we're going to break. What? Oh. oh, we're back from break. And you just saw like the whole empty ring there. Uh, SEU had a promo in the nation's capital. Eh, it's okay. Uh, Lucha Bro they, then they had a promo in ring, and the Lucha Brothers came and beat them up, which is always good. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob were there. Uh, they got interrupted by Jack Evans. And and Helico, they need to feature those two more. So it was okay. I mean, I like the fact that there wasn't a lot of promos. It was really heavy on wrestling. Um, then the next match was Hangman Page versus Pac. Um, starts off just who yeah, they just start off trading blows, which is pretty cool. Just a good old fashioned brawl. Uh, Page again, he has that dive. The thing with Hangman Page's dive is that it's not. Predictable, at least, just unlike Seth Rollins diving, and he he only does it once, which makes sense. Again, I think with the with that the lack of breaks, it just felt kind of weird because at the beginning of the match, they both got announced, and they just kind of like stood there and like stare at each other. The referee, I guess, gave them instructions, but they just kind of like stood there, leaned up against the ropes. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Pac, how are you? You know, they're probably, like, talking to each other across the ring. They're, like, saying, hey, hey, how's the wife and kids? Oh, they're good. Uh, how, how's your girl doing? My girl's good, thanks. Yeah, yeah we're going to go, go to Longhorn Steakhouse. Don't forget your bell. <laughs> they're probably making some crazy small talk. It just, I don't know. At least when WWE did it, the jobber was there already. They announced the big person, and they kind of start. Or they'll have one person take the jobber entrance, but and you'll be like, oh, well, I guess they're 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 they're, they're, the, they're the opponents. And it kind of goes on from there. They don't have that weird. Or they'll introduce one, give them a prolonged ring entrance, and then they'll introduce the next guy. I don't know. It's just they have a little bit to work on as far as their production goes. But other than that, I mean, the show, again, it, it just seemed like another wrestling show. Uh, with, with, again, a few exceptions. Uh, so, again, Hanging Page, again, he does the dives, which is good. Uh, Page does that running, shooting, start press. That's pretty cool. And then fly, pock, fly. Yes. He hits the 450. Then all of a sudden it picks up. So there's a definite pace to this match. And does pick up over time, which is good. Uh, it was a slow match. Again, once Pac decides, okay, I'm not screwing around anymore. Um, he pulled a Yano, 
which is what I love. And what I mean by that is that uh, he had he was paid, he got into a rear waist lock. So Hangman Page is behind him. The ref's in front of him. Pac puts his hands up so the ref can't see anything. And then Mule kicks him right in the junk. Just like Yano. And then, of course, he takes advantage from there, hits the uh, flaming arrow or whatever his, his jumpy thing is called, puts him into the rings of Saturn. I forget what they call it now. I just know it as the rings of Saturn. And Hangman Page kind of passes out. The ref has to stop the match. He cannot intelligibly defend himself. And Pac won? Eh, a cheeseburger match. This next match, I know it was a championship match. At no time limit. It was Riho versus Nyla Rose. Riho honestly is 98 pounds soaking wet in hockey equipment. They can say she's 98 pounds, period. No, she's 98 pounds soaking wet in, hot, in full goalie hockey gear. Uh, Nyla Rose is probably just a little bit smaller than probably about my yeah, probably about my size. Which means Nyla Rose probably has about I'd say about a 200 pound weight weight advantage on poor Riho. And Riho's just freaking tiny too. They showed her running the ropes. I'm like my leg's bigger th than her waist, which is always scary. Um, and, and it showed in the match there are certain moves where it looked like Nyla was really looked like she was not trying to hurt poor little Rio. She's like, I could crush you in a second, but she she didn't do that. And, and Tony's actually really good on the mic in this match. Uh, they have AEW towels too. I wonder if they were free, like free little gimmicky thing. And and Nyla, you don't know the rule about tables and chairs. You bring out the tables or chairs, you go through said tables and chairs. Because at one point, they're on the outside. She, she had chairs for some reason. I guess there was no DQ. I don't know if AEW has a no DQ rule. That's weird. But uh, that means there ain't no dust to finish in. What is my son doing? I need a dust to finish. I need at least two dust to finish it, but so. I need some blood. I need someone to do the blade job and have some juice. That's a whole other issue, though. Uh, so, so, so Nyla Rose piled up, found a whole bunch of chairs. By the way, those chairs had really soft cushions on them, too. So they would hurt. Not that much, though. It wasn't like the full-fledged steel and metal ones. Or the supposed gimmick chair. That Sean Spears used on Cody Rhodes. It was a gimmick chair, bit of a nice soft seat pad on it. But no, these all had nice cushiony seat pads, so you know they weren't that bad. Again, it's not probably um, probably the most pleasant. So Nyla Rose put Rio on top of them. She went to the top to do a senton. Unfortunately, Rio moved out of the way, and Nyla Rose fell. And those kind of the turning point of the match. Then Rio. Not too bright. She tried to do power moves on Nyla Rose. Riho, Nyla Rose is 200 pounds more than you. You're not going to get her in a suplex. In fact, that was one really bad botch. And I'm like, Riho might be dead. Because you play your back. I pulled my back once. It hurt for a good solid week and a half. I tore an intercostal muscle. For like a week, at least it had to be at least four days where it literally hurt to breathe, and I didn't want to twist at all. So I don't know what Rio's thinking. I know Rio, I think she is the nine year old that Kenny Omega took on, geez, so many years ago. Um, so it was okay. Rio eventually did. Hit like knee drops and a northern lights bridging suplex, and Riho won. Surprise, surprise! And it was a good match, minus the one botch. It was a, 
It was really a ham sandwich. It's just one of those matches. It's like, how's a 98-pound person going to take on a 250-plus-pound person? Doesn't work. They have the same skill set. I mean, they're both professionals. And then Nyla Rose was upset, started to destroy her. Kenny Omega, of course, came out to save Rio. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. And this leads us up to the main event where it's the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega taking on Santana Ortiz and Jericho. So they haven't given them a name yet. They're LAX. Uh, Jericho kind of starts, and Kenny starts off for a little bit. Um, Jericho's like, nah, I'm the heel. Uh, tagging someone, uh, I think it was Santana. Then it's just a super kick party, typical young spots. Then John Moxley shows up. He was supposed to be here, and he started beat up Kenny, so I guess there's no DQ. And Jericho's like, I don't know what he said, but it was, hey, hey. There's only one person where you can use baby. That's Adam Cole, baby. Not Chris Jericho, baby. Chris Jericho has the bubbly. Not baby. There's a difference there. Stupid idiots. Uh, again, kind of came to an LAX spot fest for a while. John Moxley did dirty deeds. Kenny threw a glass table. If that was real solid plate glass, someone would get like, there'd be blood all over the place. Cody, what I tell you, somebody has to bleed. You gotta use the real plate stuff, not this sugar glass. I wanna see some juice. But then Jericho went for a mic. Someone threw a hot dog in the ring. <laughs> probably when John Moxley came in the ring, the fans were like, boo, someone probably threw a hot dog. Because he picked up a hot dog. Like, Who threw a wiener in the ring? And we're just like, and we want wieners. <sighs> Crowd. Uh, then again, LEX stuff. Uh, towards the end of the match, again, it was a two on three. It was the Young Bucks versus everyone. Young Bucks eventually get beat up. And then it's just more of a meeting because let's see if I can get this list right. They just go three on two to Nick, I think. Matt's on the outside. So, Cody Rhodes shows up first. And then Sammy Guevara. So, Cody tries to make the save. Sammy Guevara then comes in to beat up Cody. Dustin comes in to beat up Sammy. Who else came in? Someone else came in. Oh, MJF came up to beat up Cody. They'll beat up Cody and Dustin for some reason. And then Jack Swagger or Jake Hager shows up. Surprise! And starts beating up everyone. So really, it's kind of heels beat up everyone. And that was in this match. Eh. It's a ham sandwich. And it's a dusty old ham sandwich. Because it should have been a DQ finish with some blood. And that was the first show of AEW. Will I watch again? Yes. If they keep this up, maybe just pay per views. I'm not going to say is this good or bad based on one show. If the next show follows kind of the same formula and the next show and the next show and the next show I might go back to NXT on Wednesdays. Or I just might take Wednesdays off. Like I used to. Uh, so that was AEW. Again, let me know what you think. You can always leave me a comment. Or send an email my way. It's always nice to hear I'm getting something other other than copyright violations, I guess. I still think I have... Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, 30 minus... So, well, I'm done to like 50-some-odd days for my YouTube thing. For, for, 
being in the hobo penalty box. Other than that, um, I'll say for an opening show, it was a ham sandwich. Let me know what you guys think. And everyone have a good night, and you'll see me again. Oh, tomorrow, because I have to do predictions.